first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not paying for my neighbor's dog's child support? Yes, you read that right. This story is going to sound ridiculous, especially with that story from yesterday about the dog's cheating, but I assure you this isn't an S-post. My neighbor's dog recently got pregnant and she claims my dog did it, which is likely because her dog often escaped into my yard and she lets her dog roam around it. It's annoying because her dog dumps in my yard. Well, now that she's pregnant, she's pissed because hers was a purebred and she wanted to breed it. She says she's entitled to financial compensation and I'll have to pay child support for the pups as it'll cost her to take care of them. I laughed my butt off and said fat chance and no way in hell I'm paying for her dog's child support and this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. She's threatening legal action and I'm pretty sure she can't do anything. She did nothing to stop her dog from entering my yard and often encouraged it. She just assumed my dog was neutered. She can't prove my dog impregnated hers. And lastly, I don't think child support works for dogs. Now for the top comments. Not day haul. This is looking interesting. Do you get half the profits when she sells the puppies? Exactly the deal. Opie should get it in writing. Curious if the neighbor will bring it up again. Not a hole. If she wanted her dog to breed with specific dogs, she should not have let it roam free. Also, what's with the was a purebred nonsense? It's not like the dog's genes are now altered. If it breeds with another purebred dog of the same race, the results will be purebred puppies. I know it's a thing in the breeding world, but it's stupid as hell. I think she's just referring to the fact that there is a maximum number of litters a female dog can have. And now one of those litters will be less profitable because they won't be purebred. She's still clearly the a-hole here, though. Everyone sucks here. It's dumb of her to demand child support for a dog. But if you don't want your dog making puppies, you should have neutered him. There are too many dogs in the world in the first place. Did you miss the part about the neighbor letting their dog roam around Opie's yard without permission? Maybe the neighbor should have had their dog fixed if they wanted to be responsible. Not an a-hole. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my nephew his presents were from me and not his dad? So, I bought Christmas presents for my nephews, 8 plus 14, and gave them to my brother since I won't be seeing them for Christmas this year. They had tags on them that said, To XXX love and XXX. Well, the 14-year-old's birthday was three days ago, so he opened one of his birthday presents from his dad, my brother. Then the 8-year-old got jealous, so I let him open one of his Christmas presents from me. Then I guess he just let them both open everything. On his birthday, I asked my nephew what he got. He proceeded to tell me he got an RC helicopter, a card game, and a game for his Xbox. Two of which were what I gave him. So I was confused and asked if he opened a Christmas wrap gift. He said yeah, he and his brother just opened them on his birthday. I said, oh, okay, well, I hope you liked what I got you. I'm not sure what teenagers are into nowadays. And he said, huh? Dad said he bought those. I was confused. So after the conversation, I texted my brother about it. He was upset I ended up telling my nephew and said, money's tight this year. I wanted them to think I was able to give them a good Christmas. And you ruined it. Thanks. And hung up. I'm so mad and confused. Logically, I know the point is that they got presents, but like, damn, I'm still mad because now they think I didn't give them anything for Christmas either. Am I the a-hole? Should I have talked to my brother first before telling my nephew they were from me? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your brother should have talked to you before giving his children the present you gave them. I understand your brother being tied on money, but they could have given their children cheaper presents instead of lying to them. To be honest, this is why I always wrap the cards into presents so people can't claim the gift without asking. Not the a-hole. Your brother is the a-hole for real. He straight up lied to his children and blamed you for it. Yeah, money is tight, but he is not the only one struggling. Also, his children are old enough to understand that this year is different, so he just should be honest with them. Also, I don't see the point why they were allowed to open their Christmas presents on the birthday of one of them. Like, now they get nothing for Christmas. Your brother messed up on many different levels. Would still demand from brother to be honest with the kids, or I will be honest with them if he is not. 
I am happy to bet a brother is going to ask everyone to buy them new presents for Christmas, and he will lie to his kids again that those are from him. No, no. Brother should have talked to you from day one and asked if you were on board with doing this. If you said no, then so be it. You have no expectation to need to clear the truth on something so basic with anyone. Not a hole. Now for the next story. Am I the a for celebrating my anniversary despite what happened at my wedding? My husband and I had our wedding last year. The venue was beautiful and bordered a lake. Unfortunately, during the reception, one of the young children snuck away from their parents and decided to go for a swim, despite not being able to. This was tragic and devastating, and obviously cut the day short. We haven't really spoken to the parents since then, as we weren't close to them aside from seeing them on holidays, which haven't happened this year. We are still Facebook friends though. When our first anniversary came, I made a post celebrating our anniversary with a few wedding photos. I didn't think anything of it until the comments came flooding in. I woke up to 30 comments and 15 missed calls. The top comment was from the mother of the child, who was outraged about it. She wrote a very long comment about how my post was disrespectful of the tragedy that had happened that day, and how dare I post that and not mention her child, and of course talking to her first. 30 comments later, and it was clear that the entire family had clearly started to take sides in a battle I didn't realize I created. As of today, we're at 150 comments. My friends and my parents are involved too. Half of his family is screaming for me to take it down, apologize to the parents, and show more respect, possibly by even celebrating our anniversary on a different day. Some of the family think that we should still be able to celebrate our anniversary on the actual day, but just keep it offline to keep the peace. I don't think I did anything wrong with my post, and I feel like we should be allowed to celebrate our anniversary just like anyone else. I'm not celebrating the tragedy, I'm celebrating my wedding. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Everyone sucks here, but for crying out loud, take the post down. On one hand is a family with a dead child facing the one-year anniversary of their loss. Unimaginable pain. On the other hand is your need to have people comment on how pretty your wedding was and tell you happy anniversary. Their pain far outweighs your needs for likes. Why you didn't block the family of the dead child from your post is beyond my ability to comprehend. As soon as you saw it was causing pain, you delete the post. Of course, you can celebrate your anniversary all you want. Just not visible to these people who have a dead child. Show compassion. I have to agree here. We weren't that close isn't exactly a great excuse for ignoring that someone who will see this post lost their child during this event. You're the a-hole. Something awful happened at your wedding. It wasn't your fault, but it's something that you have to deal with. I'm very sorry that you will never be able to have a normal anniversary, but that's a small burden compared to having to deal with the loss of a child. Those that say you should just celebrate privately are absolutely correct. Do not put anything celebratory where the grieving parents can see it. People have been celebrating anniversaries for centuries before Facebook existed. You'll survive without making public announcements of your love for friends to see. I can't believe it took this long of scrolling to find a your the a-hole. I think your last sentence hits the nail on the head. You became the a-hole the moment all hell broke loose on your post, and you didn't have the decency to delete it completely. The fact that Opie cannot actually say the words, a child died at my wedding, means that they know how upsetting this is. Yet, chose to put this into the face of the grieving parents. You're the a-hole to the max. Edit. I have changed the post to only be visible to me and deleted all comments to try to stop the arguing. But from the email we just received, those comments were just a symptom of a larger problem. My mother-in-law sent us an email with, from what I can tell, Roughly three-fourths of my husband's family carbon copied on it. His parents, grandparents, and the parents of the child are not only in the different day camp, but they are also demanding a second wedding. According to them, they've kept their silence for so long due to shock and being distracted by everything else going on this year, but they feel that because of what happened, we aren't really married yet in the family. They understand that weddings are expensive, so they, husband's parents, offered to completely pay for his second wedding that will be the real wedding in his family's eyes. And because it may be a year or two before this can be done safely, 
they will tolerate us living in sin indefinitely due to the circumstances. My husband hates arguing with his family, and I'm not sure how I would even approach this with my family without being laughed out of the room. So now we need to talk about what to do with this. The last story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not sharing my inheritance with my cousins? My paternal grandparents died in a car accident when I was a child. In their will, they left their house, a lakefront cabin, to their grandchildren. At the time, that was just me. My parents had barely hung onto their own house in the recession and didn't trust the stock market, so they turned the cabin into a rental. The plan was that when I went to college, I could sell it for a hopefully higher price, plus have whatever rental income it had made. It was a good choice. By the time I graduated high school, the cabin had made enough to pay for almost two-thirds of tuition. I decided that rather than sell it, I'd use student loans and pay them off with a future rental income. I'm a junior now, and if things keep on as they are, I will pay off the loans two years after I graduate. The trouble started a year ago when my paternal aunt married a man with two teenage sons. They'd used the cabin a few times before the marriage, as I always let family use it, but after they started going monthly. I tried to be patient because I knew COVID was making us all steer crazy, but their visits made it difficult for me to sanitize the cabin. We started having quibbles over when they could go. Then, I went up to prep for a new client, and I found a mess, one made after I cleaned up for my last guest. The keypad logs show my aunt's code. She had not told me her family would be there. I called her to ask why she hadn't asked to use the cabin or cleaned up, and she said we should talk in person. My parents and I go to her backyard, social distancing and all, and she first made my cousins apologize for leaving the cabin a mess. They revealed they were there alone, and I told them that can't happen. No one under 18 can stay in the cabin and supervised, per the rental license. Rather than address this, she told me she was very frustrated with how I treated a family cabin like it was mine alone. It was all for the grandchildren, so her sons now owned a third each. I almost passed out, but my parents jumped in and told her no, that's not how inheritance worked. They had specifically asked the estate lawyer about this, and she said that beneficiaries had a time limit to claim their inheritance, and once it was distributed, it was final. The cabin was mine alone, legally. My aunt freaked out and said I was being greedy. Grandma and Grandpa wanted us to share, and I should teach my cousins the business so that the cabin could pay for their college too. It became a big fight, and my uncle asked us to leave. Now, I'm very torn. On the one hand, I love my cabin, and I worked really hard to build my business. At this point, I handled all bookings, cleaning, and maintenance. But on the other hand, if my grandparents had died today instead of over a decade ago, my cousins would have a share. So, am I standing up for myself by keeping the cabin, or am I being a greedy a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not an a-hole. Your parents are correct. That is entirely your cabin. Change the locks on the cabin and no longer allow your aunt or her family access. They are trying to take something of yours to which they have absolutely no right. Also, your aunt gave her code to her stepson so they could party at your cabin without adult supervision. You need to respond by blocking their access. Not they hole. Also, they are step-grandchildren, not by grandchildren. They have no claim of inheritance. Haha, <laughs> not they hole. Your parents are right. That's not how it works, and you have no blood relation to them, therefore, there's no legal obligation times two. You don't even know if your grandparents would have given them any inheritance. For all you know, they could have only wanted a cabin to stay in the blood relative family. Don't give them a damn thing. Not a hole. Absolutely not greedy at all. Your parents are correct in stating that that's not how inheritance works, meaning it's settled at a time probate is closed. Greedy is what your new step-siblings are being. Don't feel bad and just tell them, nice try. They are not familiar to your grandparents. The husband came with the kids. Would be completely different if they were your aunt's biological children. Change the code to the security system fast, or they might just move in. What if she has a baby now? Do you think I should give that child half the cabin? And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you with the next one. Stay safe.